Hello my very good friends. This is a fabulous day for me and Mud Fossil University and Rodney Warren because it looks like we might be getting Nobel Prizes. It says here, if you can explain this using common sense and logic, do let me know because there is a Nobel Prize for you. Now this is the Royal Institute now and here's what they're talking about is the double slit experiment. You know I've been talking about this for a long time. Now there's no reason to use a double slit. The double slit they're showing is light coming through this way not full spectrum light but a single colored light like red or blue or green. Now it goes through these slits and they're saying it's coming through flapping like waves and when it comes out the other side it's like water slashing against each other and that makes all of these wave looking patterns. I say that is incorrect and I say the reason that they don't understand it is because everything that they have a premise about is wrong. Uh, because the particle theory, uh, Bohr theory, all of that stuff is wrong. So let's just get right into it so that I can get my Nobel Prize. Okay, this is from the work I did with Rod, Rod Warren, and let's just start at the top. This is light from a pulse red laser. And it looks like a wave, yeah, yeah, I'll agree with that, and it actually is a particle, and that particle is right there, a tiniest little particle. And what you're seeing is the concussion because that tiny little particle owns a huge region around it like this and it makes all that stuff get out of the way so it concusses and that's where you get this just like the wake of a boat jet fighter going through the breaking the sound barrier these little particles here are ether particles they are the excess electrons that are all floating in the air Un this is not strongly attached to anything primarily attached to water molecules that are, are very polar and, and um, like little magnets. Now, this is that same wave. And that is the particle I spoke of. Okay. This is the wave as it accelerates this way. And what would make that accelerate? And why would that show up? And why is this wave elongated? And how did it pull away from its own wave? That thing is rocket shipping out of there. Now, how did that happen? Well, there is a Venturi here. Now is where I am going to explain the double slit experiment. What they have done is they are seeing light spinning like this. And I will show that in great detail momentarily. And as it, its tiny little particle is going, we can't see it spin, but it's spinning like crazy. Now, Around it is this big ball of magnetism that it owns. Whew, it comes flying through there, and then it hits this, which is a venturi. That means there's two round drums of metal sticking straight up like this. And that light has to go through those drums, and when it does, it collapses it in, crushes it, turns it into plasma, separates charges. This is what really gets me. However, that's secondary to my Nobel Prize because here is where the interference patterns are and those are not interference patterns those are repulsion patterns and what happens is the these are all particles that do not want to touch each other they want to be away from each other as they come out of here they form a line just like troops and I say everybody stay that way 30 inches that way through, like it was always in the army they used to say uh, we used to call our cover up uh, uh, what was it uh, cover up and dress it down 30 inches all around and that's what these guys are doing because you stay there 30 inches you stay there 30 inches the next one's the same thing you stay there. and you get these repulsion patterns most of us coming through the center obviously because the center is the most obvious place but the rest some of it goes through here and goes out that way some comes over the top and goes out this way some goes through the center but regardless that is repulsion magnetically all right, so let's continue on and look a little further here. Now, uh, sound waves are the same as light waves. The same, same, identical. Uh, it's just they haven't broken the speed of sound or speed of light. 
Uh, this is chaos at the slit. It just makes all kind of boiling stuff and then it comes out. And, and in between here is where you get the bosons and the Higgs. Uh, which we showed before. Oh, no, actually we didn't. Here it is right here. This is the bo this is the Cherryenkov. The light is coming at us, shoom, right into your face. And we're looking down into it. And these are the boson particles, these little white spits coming out of here. And what do they see here? These are what they call Higgs fields. And a Higgs field is nothing more than particles that are in the air, which is the ether, which is those little white dots I showed you there everywhere. And they are attached to water molecules primarily. However, they react to magnetic fields. This thing is coming out of here. And it's polar. Positive, negative, positive, blah, 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 blah. and these follow it around in a circle, and they just go with it. They're charged particle carriers, bosons. This is the charged particle that is being carried, this head. All right, so there is your, your interference pattern particles, and those are your Higgs fields, and that is a reverse spinner, and that could be antimatter. Uh, anti uh, and here's what that one did, that little white one. It ended up coming down here and doing this. Very interesting. It's got the same architecture as this. You can see there's some kind of there's something to it. I don't know what it is, what it is but it, what, it, what I, I, all I can tell you is it came out of there as that white thing, and it's ended up bouncing into one of these and and and, and and doing that. Now, that is smaller than light, because this is, if this is light, the field that surrounds the particle of light, because the particle of light is only in here, way down in the center. So if this is the field that surrounds it, this could be the same particle of light in the center of this, and then it's going to fluff up? I don't know. But I can't imagine that the light particles can get much smaller than light, because I, I, I believe every electron is the same, and I believe light is nothing more than two electrons back to back. And this is the spinning pattern of the light. I don't have to go too deep into this. Some goes this way, some goes that way, most goes through the center. That is the screw pattern, just like that. Any machinist can tell you that is the, the face of a drill bit. Now, what do we have next here? Oh, the red electrons. These are the particles coming out of the accelerator. They do a little of this, and then they turn into this for two, two waves, we'll call them. And then they settle down, and they start to go back into their normal stuff. Carver did some, something similar, and I don't think they even realized what they did. They put theirs through a graphene, a graphene that's, a, that's nothing more than the same thing we're using. That's, a, that's exactly the same, but they didn't realize it. And when it came out of here, it came out with similar patterns, but really, f you know, nothing, nothing as good as we got. <laughs> what do you expect? It was only Harvard. Uh, blue wave, you don't have to see that. Green vortex, and yeah, well, might as well see that. This is coming out, and he clipped one, came off to the side, it looks like. Somehow he did this. I don't know how. And he's got them all congested over here. And that one little bugger took off to the side and, and created this pattern, which is the pattern of a, of a Higgs field. And it just kind of followed it out. And it's settling down as it's coming out, and it's just, it's just what it does. Green is much more powerful than the uh, red. These are green electrons. There's one. That's a pretty good shot. And like I say, I think that is an electron, and that is an electron. It just one is up and one is down, and they're blocked together like like a, a bar magnet. And when they come through the accelerator, they just are in plasma. They just turn into each independent ones. That's the way I'm taking it. Because I, I I show you why. And you tell me if you can figure out why, because I'm seeing exactly what I think happened. And I can't see any, well, I can't even tell you why it happens, because it's got me perplexed. Now, these greens coming out of here really fast. Remember the reds pop right about here? These come way out. And uh, same particle. Now, uh, Renz did some work over here. Uh, let's see what we got here. Well, here, this is Renz. 
my front runs. Right here, look at this. These are leptons. There's your Higgs. These are the white Higgs. Now, why is it white? Because it's from full spectrum sunlight. It's coming out of the sun. He put his thumb up like this. He created a half a venturi. This is a Higgs tumbling off his thumb. What is this? Blue, green, red, blue, green, red, blue, green, red, and red splaying out. That is the colors of lepton. Blue, green, red. Impact, less impact, not much impact. It's as simple as that. Now, I mean, this is very, these new cameras are absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, and actually, these are old cameras. Now, I showed, well, just to show you and be sure you understand what Charyenkov is. Most people that are here will probably know this, but let's just see. Cheryankov is the high speed. You see this VE? That's the voltage of the electron. What is voltage? It's the, how fast it's going, the impact. Well, we accelerated ours. I was going faster than hell. And when they hit like this, like glass of just normal air, boom, everything just goes flying. Exactly what we saw. And that is the, these are, they call these electron neutrinos. You go to a physicist, oh, we can't find electron. Oh, oh, we have to go 10,000 miles under the earth. Oh, 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 oh. No, you just, just like shoot all the neutrinos you want. And that's cause they create electron showers. It's Cheryankov radiation from electron shower produced by electron neutrino events, multiple cones. And that's not. There's no mystery here. Uh, what do we got? 22, 22, 22, 22. Okay, Fabian. This guy Fabian Boyer did some work on double lasers, and I think he. I, I'm not sure what he did to be perfectly honest with you, but I believe he's got two lasers. You know impacting at different distances out for some reason. I'm not sure how he, he accomplished that, but I can see there's Higgs inside of Higgs. Well, that's pretty interesting to me. Something he's trying to poke through this one, I don't know, very strange. He got some other neat, neat shots too. Uh, let me just show you what he had. He had another one, Fabian Green and Red. Here it is. <coughs> no. <clears throat> Here he's shooting out the green and the red, I mean the green and the red at the same time. Now, he, and then he's showing the particles they're making. There's some red ones and some green ones mixed together. But look at this, I can't understand either. He's got, they're coming out pretty close. You can see that's much more high power than this. Now, for some reason they're interacting and you can see this, you see that? That is what's got me int very interested. Why that happened? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. None. <laughs> but I can see that the green is, is imp mostly impacted out here. Something interacted here along with the red. And then the red's gone as far as, uh, you know, but it's in, it shows up a little bit out here. I don't know. I really don't know whether the green pushed the red away and that's the main part because it looks like he's got two of them coming together did the green drive the red away it might have it very well might have there's a lot to look at this you know and i see you know because i i just realized that could happen and i just realized that right now before i was looking at it thinking i want to mess this <laughs> You know, you got to look at things 10,000 times before you see it the first time. I'm telling you, I've been doing this for four years or more. Now, look at this. This one here is a killer. This is just absolutely stunning. Now, you explain this to me, Mr. Royal Institute. That is that light coming down. Those are those particles, which I am saying at this point, they are starting to turn into plasma, which in my world, plasma is electrons which is, they call them now excitons, excitons, which is nothing more than a bar magnet, which is what I'm talking about, all the particles are. And they, I say the whole entire universe is made up only of those, and a proton is 1,836 of them. That's why we can create all these kind of isotopes and all these different variations of um, particles. Anyway, so here we are. That is the particle. Then, you see this here? That's black. That's all black. There's black here, black, 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 No black. Zero blackness. 
none does not exist in this plasma why I, I had it all figured out oh yeah I got that figured out no problem yeah, they all go to Lord, and they're just so excited that they just concuss and luminous and just they just you know I really can't explain it but uh, that's how I was explaining it now so then I say to myself I look and I say well this blackness is here and the blackness is here and the whiteness how did the blackness get back to the over here if it was whiteness here and why didn't it get in with the whiteness? Is it some other part of a particle? Or is it the same? I, I just I can't, can't figure it out. I don't know. Maybe you got a solution. I can't figure it out. I know what they look like. Those little back-to-back, -back, white and black. I know that. And I can see black and white. But how they ended up ripping it apart. Because, again, I don't know if I said this before. But you, it's just, to me, that black and white coming in there is like a piece of paper. It's got two sides to it. And every piece of paper has two sides. You can't get one side off the paper and not have another side. It's impossible. Unless the paper is two pieces of paper stuck together. <laughs> and when you take one side off and the other side goes its, its own way... I guess it's got way it's got to be. I guess it's got to be two two pieces of paper, two particles, a plus and a minus, down even below the light realm. And these are some minuses, and these are some pluses, or back back to the other way. It's very confusing. This is a very very deep 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 work here we're doing. I mean seriously, I'm not bragging or anything, but it's. Uh, it's about as deep as I've ever seen anything get. No, here's, what, here's, here's the Higgs events from CERN. And they're doing the same thing we're doing. Only they have 8,000 times bigger particles. And they come head to head and just splash them all over the universe. And then they just go picking up the pieces to see if what, they, what they see. And these are the same things we're seeing. Same particles. Only they have big, big, big chunks. But they do exactly the same thing. The particle is a particle. The little one does the same thing as the big ones, as above, so below. No difference whatsoever. Alright, so I guess I'm going to leave it at that. And, um, you know, if, it's, if, if, if a Nobel Prize is being offered, I would certainly accept. And Rodney has to have one too, obviously. Alright, thank you.